Good morning, folks. We've got a number of items to hit today from the sun, learning how to read key weather maps, dings from distant space, and detail on important geophysical processes. Starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last 24 hours were calm only in the sense of there not being major flares or eruptions. Coronal activity is rising otherwise, and we've got a new and growing group of sunspots behind the big one incoming already. Trailing portion will be monitored for increased X-ray flare production. Sliding next to the solar wind, top left the purple line creeping upwards. We are indeed getting the bulk of the coronal hole stream from the north, but it is modest intensity at best. Minor KP instability bottom right at the yellow bars. Okay folks, let's review some foundations of weather. All low pressure, purple, sucks in at the surface. All high pressure, red, pushes out at the surface. Lows spin counterclockwise in the north, clockwise in the south, with the highs reversed. Their working of the wind is why global temperatures don't just follow your latitude and altitude, because often the wind is bringing hot or cold air from the south or the north, but also of importance is where the winds crash together as they come around the spin. On the poleward side, north here, the rains and snow tend to be consistent for the life of the system, but the equator side of the flow, to the south of the cell here, is where the bigger storms can be formed. Just watch how this develops as the day goes on. This is how tornadoes are formed in summertime in the U.S., by the way, all following the wind convergence. Going to be a doozy tonight and into tomorrow down in the Gulf states, and we will get one more look here at the wonky temperature map, which obviously favors the wind over latitude. From practical to probing the impossibly small, they have figured out that it is atomic motions under light bombardment that are driving the electron action that drives photomagnetism. This has important implications for data storage, they say, but this is also how binary systems work in space. It's also likely how the Laniakea and Perseus Pisces superclusters are fitting into one another like a yin-yang. Up next, we're deep into space, 12.5 billion light years away, and this is the brightest radio blazar at that distance ever recorded, second brightest in X-rays at that distance. These returns you're seeing are all radio waves and span the 1.5 GHz to 8.4 GHz spectrum. Chalk 1 in the wind column for planets and chaos. Long ago there was another Ceres-sized body in here in the inner solar system and indeed, they conclude that there may once have been many more asteroid parents that we no longer see flying around. This complements the stories of planets battling in the sky and at least one being destroyed. The only problem is, Despite how often the science seems to match up with the ancient stories, they want to tell us that this was hundreds of millions of years ago, our indigenous ancestors didn't see it, and just randomly guessed what happened. Seriously, that's the story. Anyway, we're off to Grace, the satellite that details aspects of gravity and even magnetism, and we've got three things to take away from their main graphic. Top left is the gravity field, and it's hard not to notice the large returns right over the core mantle boundary plumes the internal structure of the planet. Top right is the magnetism dominant mode. Interesting that Australia and Siberia take the strongest readings as that's where the magnetic poles are tracking past. And on the bottom is the secular variation of the two. Even over just this short period of time, nothing for a magnetic study, we see the increase in variability and fluctuations from a calm, stable norm. Nice little animation up next to the Earth Observing Fleet, except this is actually just the ones monitoring aerosols and carbon dioxide and other things that may have been affected by the 2020 shutdowns. They're calling it their COVID Observing Fleet as I hold back the vomit mid-sentence. Couple quick little hits on climate as we come down the stretch. 11-year sunspot cycle influence over both temperature and humidity is significant and present in their samples, with hints of the longer cycles as well. But of course, the sun doesn't work the weather according to global warming, folks. According to them, this is fake news since the ice up there is not supposed to be there and we get nothing but red, 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 red super heat reports over the Arctic and polar region. Obviously, them getting stuck for 10 days and now more ships being sent out to save them must be fake news. Or the other option. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close and of course we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.